Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Yeah. Welcome back to the lectures. The uh, purpose of this lecture is to introduce elementary mathematical functions, a few of them that you will need time and again during this course either as solutions for the quantum problems that you study or uh, functions which you will need in order to understand the uh, behavior, the mathematical and the spectroscopic uh, out outcomes of experiments and so on. So, let me start with something very, very elementary and this lecture is titled Elementary Mathematical Functions Used in Our Course. It is not exhaustive, in 20 minutes I cannot uh, say too many things. The first function that uh, we will look at are the two sets of functions exponential e to the plus or minus kx. k is a real constant. If k is imaginary or complex, it has its own uh, different set of properties. k is real constant. Let us look at what the exponential actually means. I think most of you Remember the plot when we write, when we picture the exponential uh, as a function of the variable x and you write this the y axis as exponential k of x. For a given value of k, if you plot this function, obviously uh, at x is equal to 0, this function has a value 1. So, we will start somewhere here some scale and then you can see that if k is positive, k is greater than 0, then this is a growth function, okay? growth meaning that the function increases in its value as x increases. Now, that is for one value of k. Now, let me call that k as k 0, some constant. Now, suppose I have a different value of k, the function may again start from 1, but it may grow something like this, okay? or it may be slower for another value of k, or it may be really fast. Okay? So, let us do it by making this as k naught k1, k2, k3 as some different values of k. What is the relation between these? It is quite obvious that this grows much faster for a given value of x than any other function. Obviously, k3 is larger than k2, then k1, then k0. That is a pictorial representation of the function, that is not the understanding of the function. The understanding of the function is slightly different. I mean, if we know that the constants are in this order, the function when it is plotted looks like that. What is the understanding of the exponential growth? Let us try and understand this function. Okay. Now, the way to see this is to consider this particular case, namely for x. We start with 1 when x is 0. At a time, uh, sorry, at a particular value of x, okay, the function reaches some value here. When x becomes, this is x1, 2x1.
1, 2, 4, 2, 1. At 2x1, so at x1, uh, we have here, and at 2x1, the function has the value 4, for example, some units. And at 3x1, it reaches a value 8. That is, every increment, identical increment, if the value of that function doubles its previous value, such a behavior is an exponential growth, such a behavior, exponential. There is nothing special about being doubling, being a double or doubling. The function may start with some value in the first interval, whatever value that it becomes from 1, it may become 3. But in the next same amount of interval, the function 3 becomes 3 square. In the next interval, 3 square becomes 3 cube. Such growths are called exponential growths. Okay. If you do it for 3, quite obviously it is even steeper or in this picture itself, if you do it for 3, you are somewhere here and then 9, you are somewhere here. So, the point is you have uh, here and then for 2x1, you are here and you see that the function grows even steeper. This is what is meant by k. This is what is implied by k. k tells how fast, in what ratio that the function grows with respect to the variable x. Okay? This is for exponential growth. Now, what about k less than 0? that is negative, which we call as exponential decay, okay? e to the kx, k greater than 0, growth, k less than 0, it is decay. Of course, in both cases, k real. So, you have e to the minus some value of k, whatever is the number of x. So, if you plot this, it has exactly similar, but an, an image kind of a picture. Okay. We will start with x and uh, e to the kx is 0, that is it is 1. Okay. And suppose for a value x1, the function becomes one half, one by two. Then that's a value. For the same interval, x one, that is two x one, the function decreases by the same fraction. One half becomes one fourth. Start. One fourth. In the next interval, identical interval, 3x1 becomes 1, 8. Okay. Such a behavior, if you connect, is exponential decay. That is also exponential. That is the nature of the exponential function. The ratio for of the function for any given period, the ratio is the same from that is the ratio of the value before the value after. If you take that value, that ratio, that ratio remains for one particular interval ratio. Okay. So, here the this is what is called the half life if you are interested in decay processes. And the number becomes one half at a particular time t1 if you 
write the function exponential k t where t is time if you do that instead of x you use t then you have t1, 2t1, 3t1 and so on. So the exponential is an extremely important function having this specific characteristics okay. And the derivative of an exponential d by dx of e to the kx is k e to the kx that you should know and the integral of 0 to some constant c1 finite value of an exponential kx dx is obviously you can calculate that okay. If you do not put the limits you know that it is going, going to be 1 by k times e to the kx. Therefore, you have to be careful that this integral is for a finite limit. If you go from and if k is positive, if you go from 0 to infinity, this is infinite. The function is unbounded, the integral is infinite. If it is negative, you know that 0 to infinity, if you have exponential minus kx, you know what the answer is. It's 1 by k. Okay. So the properties of integration, the properties on differentiation and the simple nature of exponential is one extremely important function for you. The second function that you need to worry about is also an exponential, but it is not called an exponential, it is called it is called Gaussian if it is minus we usually call it a Gaussian function. This is again important in all the quantum and spectroscopy studies that you have. What is the nature of this function? Unlike uh, what you saw here, it is not increasing forever, it is in fact it is decreasing forever because if k is real and positive this whole thing is decreasing as x either increases from 0 to infinity or x decreases from 0 to minus infinity because the function is uh, dependent on the square of x. This is also known as an even function okay. and the shape of this function when you plot it uh, for x this is plus infinity and this is minus infinity. You do that at x is equal to 0, this whole thing is exponential 0, it is 1 and for all other values of x positive and x negative, it is symmetric about to the line and this is obviously uh, bell shaped. Even function. Okay. Now, again, if e to the minus k x square for one value k1. Suppose I want to plot this for another value k2, where k2 is less than k1, it is uh, quite clear that for any given x, this will be smaller because k1 is more than k2 this one is smaller, this one is slightly larger and therefore you can see that the function that if k2 is less than k1, you will have uh, a uh, more elaborate, a wider function. This is k2, okay, k2. If you have k0, sorry, yeah, you have k2 is less than k1 and you have k0 now less than k2 less than k1. If you do that, then the function is even that, k0, okay. So the smaller the value of the exponent, the wider the 
uh, more extended the function is or the opposite the larger the value of these k's the more narrow the narrower the function is you go from in the reverse direction. This is another function which is extremely important for your uh, calculations in uh, spectroscopy and quantum mechanics and again you must know that the derivative of this function e to the minus k x square is minus 2 k x e to the minus k x square okay? and the integral of this function from 0 to infinity e to the minus k x square d x is given by 1 by 2 root pi over k. Okay. Okay, this is a property and this being a, an even function you can also do the integral of the same function between the entire uh, x coordinate e to the minus e k x square dx and that is exactly twice this integral it's root pi over k. Okay. So, these are standard integrals known as Gaussian integral. Okay. This is another function that you would need in studying the properties of harmonic oscillators and quite a lot in the in understanding spectroscopic line shapes and so on. So, basic properties you should be familiar with. There are similar functions that we will see which are slightly modified from these functions namely multiplied by a polynomial instead of e to the minus k x we may have an x multiplying e to the minus k x f 1 of x some function. We may have x square e to the minus k x and so on ok. Many many such functions and also for the Gaussian we will have e to the minus k x square and we will have x e to the minus k x square, we will have x square e to the minus k x square and so on. These are functions which, would, which we will see time and again and the properties and the shapes of these things should be uh, known to you. Go back and draw some of these things. Let me draw two of them before I conclude this small introduction to the mathematical ideas. Suppose we want to plot x e to the minus k x okay, for some value of k and we will do that for the positive segment. Please remember we cannot uh, try to do this in the negative segment that is for the negative values of x. You see that the exponent this whole thing becomes positive and therefore e to the positive number keeps on increasing therefore on the negative side this function increases beyond limit for very large values. Therefore, we will stay from 0 to some positive values and you can see that at x is equal to 0 this is 1 this is 0 therefore, the function is 0 ok. And for any for any other x as x increases this increases e to the minus k x decreases and therefore, there is a competition between x and e to the minus k x up to a point and that point is obviously called the maximum of that function and after that point the exponential minus k x drops off so much more quickly than x increasing that the competition is lost the function decreases forever and therefore, there is a maximum and then the function goes to 0 ok. And how do we determine this maximum? We take the derivative of this function e to the minus k x x and then set that equal to 0. Then you will find out that the function has a maximum ok. The derivative of this is clearly it is a uv so you can do that and when you set uh, the derivative to be 0 you will get a value for the maximum ok. So, that is the maximum here that is an exercise calculate the maximum. And 
Similarly, when you go to x square, you would see that x square increases again and exponential minus kx decreases. Uh, since x square increases for larger values of x much more than x itself, the competition is taken over for a little longer or a little larger value of x and after that again the exponential wins over. In fact, the exponential wins over for all powers of the polynomials of x. If you go sufficiently far enough on the x, eventually it is the exponential that will kill the whole thing. It is very, very important. Therefore, if you think about x square e to the minus kx, uh, I can only say that it would be uh, somewhere else, the maximum would be somewhere else, okay? farther away maximum and the value of this will also be different. Okay? So, these polynomials multiplied by the exponentials are extremely important in understanding the uh, wave functions and the properties of the wave functions for hydrogen atom. The polynomials involving the Gaussian and uh, the polynomials in front of them x and x square and so on are important in understanding the harmonic oscillator and other elementary models in quantum mechanics. Therefore, please keep this in mind and uh, please attempt some of the exercises given at the end of this lecture. Until we meet next time, thank you.